Hello everyone. We are opening up the rib cage of the rabbit today to start to look at the circulatory system. To locate the areas where to cut, uh, we found it is easiest to actually feel we want to keep the diaphragm intact, the muscle that helps with breathing. So we want to find the diaphragm by going in from the abdominal cavity, finding that area, and making sure to leave that intact as we're cutting so we're not just going in blind. To open up, we have already an opening in the abdominal cavity, I bet you have seen. So extend that opening all the way up until you, and you can reach forward and feel how far you are going. You're going to start to expose the liver in here, and the diaphragm is sitting above the liver. You can also feel where the ribs are. You kind of palpate. You can feel the rib cage arcing down on either side here. We're going to actually try something a little new this year just to make things a little less complicated. We're going to extend that abdominal cut all the way up one side of the sternum and then open the rib cage like a book, leaving that sternum in place so we can potentially see that internal thoracic intact. Always check once in a while to make sure you're not cutting too deep. So I'm just cutting through muscle layer and that costal cartilage. As you approach your pectoralis tenuis, this is when it is good to just be really careful, take your time. So investigate before you cut. Now look down. Cut through your tenny. And what I'm looking for are any signs of filled vasculature that I want to leave in place. If you have cut all the way up to your manubrium here, we will eventually be removing some of this muscle and opening everything up. But first, we can see our diaphragm right here in between our lungs and liver. Let's cut around there so that these two halves of the rib cage can open up but leave that diaphragm in place. So I'm peering down, making sure that I'm not cutting the diaphragm. I'm cutting in front of it, so I'm cutting cranial to the diaphragm, just straight down on either side. You may see your internal, this is the right internal thoracic vein and artery running along here. I was trying to get close to it so it would end up on this side, but we have one on the other, on the other part of our rib cage that we can use to identify right over here. So in order to open this up, we will be cutting through that just a little bit. Up in this region, I'm also keeping a close eye for that transverse jugular. It'll be a connecting point that makes kind of an H between these two external jugular veins. It may not be filled in your rabbit, so don't distress if you can't find it.
This is probably the pickiest part of the whole operation. So the ribs want to stay closed. Um, what you can do to help mitigate that so you can actually see what you're looking at is reach down with your thumbs and sort of push at the, at the top of the ribs to crack them a little bit. And that will weaken their structure so that you can have your rib cage stay open. You can actually look at your heart without trying to keep them open. As you look at your heart, you're going to see a large kind of squishy structure on top of it. This is your thymus. Um, so it is on top of the heart, covering it, big gland that reduces, uh, it reduces with age. As, uh, as the animal gets older, it reduces in size. This thymus, you may remove. Remember what it looks like, maybe take a picture of it so you know what it looks like. You know that it was there at one point. So um, that is a good, good note. Know what the thymus is, but then get it out of your way so you can actually see the rest of the circulatory system. And I wouldn't cut it, just gently peel it off. The heart also has a pericardial sac. This is a very transparent, sort of looks like saran wrap or cellophane wrapped around the heart. This you will want to make a vertical cut and open it up again so you can see the heart more clearly. Remove all fat as well. You may encounter your phrenic nerve. This, this tough little cord here is a nerve that is part of what is innervating the diaphragm, so the, the diaphragm knows when to contract. So we'll cut up through that pericardial sac. Again, you're not fully removing it, you're just opening up that structure so that you can see the heart inside. Now we still have a piece to identify as we like. If pushing on the ribs doesn't help to sort of weaken them, you can use your scissors and just lightly snip at the base. Be careful on the left side, there's some veins in this tissue down here that we want to keep an eye out for. Um, but you can just lightly snip the ribs to weaken their structure. Really close to the spine. What you can do now is work on just cleaning out some of this um, fascia and fat. And we're using the veins and arteries as our uh, road map. So you're just basically cleaning out so we can trace the line of blood flow through these structures. The most prominent ones you're going to see on the surface are your veins, the venous structures. You'll have to dig down a little bit to find the aortic arch and then the various structures coming off of that. The arteries are thicker, so you will not see them as, they're not gonna be like bright, bright red. They're gonna be sort of a light pink color, and they're pretty tough. While we're cleaning up around the heart, let's push that heart. We're looking on the right hand side of the heart. You're going to have to push your lungs up pretty far to see this, but there's a little vein just coming right, curving immediately backwards, going back down along the spine. 
off of your uh, cranial vena cava. So cranial vena cava with that little curve right down there. This is what we were having you look out for when you're snipping your, um, your ribs. That's your azygous. And it travels back down along the spine and gives off branches to the ribs, the costal vein and artery. So there it is. Like I said, you're going to have to push the lungs up pretty far to see this. Um, just keep an eye out. We're starting to reveal a bit of that arterial tissue here. Um, but we still have a lot of cleaning to do. As you continue picking through that and following your roadmap, you will have, you'll be following a branch that goes out towards the arm. Um, so coming directly off of aortic arch, that's coming out of our left ventricle. We have a united structure. Like I said, this needs a lot of cleaning, so we'll do a full walkthrough after it's clean. But just as we're starting our dissections here, <laughs> it's nice to have a little bit of guidance. So structures coming up and out of the heart. Brachiocephalic branches into your subclavian and then two carotid structures, which you'll be looking for and finding. But speaking specifically about this subclavian, we have this little Y here. This is the subclavian that we're looking for. Um, and as you clear tissue away from that, keep an eye out for structures that are going deep, going up towards the spine. Um, and we do need to clear a path here. There's a lot of muscle and some ribs in the way. You're gonna want to remove that muscle not necessarily, you don't want to cut off your pectoral muscle, but you do want to disconnect it. So it's flapping up. It's just connected up with the shoulder. We want it to flap up, so we still see those structures that are attached to them, but the whole muscle is not in the way. So you're flapping that up and out of the way. We can see how our pathway is continuing here. That's exactly what we're looking for. Um, and the emergence point is here. Let's clear that out. So we have muscle and a rib in the way here. We'll remove that so we can see a clean path from inside the rib cage to outside the rib cage. And there's our subclavian artery hiding underneath the vein. So just be careful, like I said, when you're cleaning stuff out, make sure you're looking first for your structures before you make any sort of snip. Subclavian vein and artery branch off the, well, subclavian artery branches off the brachiocephalic, subclavian vein branches off the superior vena cava. And when they exit the rib cage and they're in the armpit area, they transition to the axillary artery and vein. Axilla, axilla is armpit. And when they move into the upper arm, the brachium, then you're going, going into your brachial artery and vein. So there are regional differences between this line of vasculature that goes from inside the rib cage towards the arm. Same here with your latissimus dorsi. This is sort of getting in our way here. So we need to just gently find where these structures need the freedom to move through. So here we go. Move that up. Here's our pathway. We'll gently remove what we need to to continue that pathway and see clearly. Now the vascular vasculature is named for what uh, what muscles and generally they are feeding or draining. Arteries feed, they feed blood to an area. Veins drain blood from an area. And as you're going through the arm, you may see um, some white cords. These are your nerves. Leave those in place. So we want to go a little bit into your right arm and then a little bit into your left arm. This is something just keep on cleaning here. Just carefully 
pick away fascia, follow those lines of your arteries and veins. You'll do the same on your right side. This is the side that you have untouched. So if anything is damaged on this side, since we did muscle on the right side, uh, there may be some structures that are broken a little bit just from our muscular investigations. So anything that is potentially broken or disturbed on this side, you will have intact on this side. That's why we leave one side untouched so that we can have an uninterrupted circulatory exploration. You'll do the exact same thing following the channels all the way out to the elbow.